Hey guys, what's going on? Sherman here. I told a few of you guys that I was going to do a video on um, the disassembly of my Microtech Ultratech. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, now real quick, um, Juju 1313 already has a video on how to take apart a, an OTF knife. Um, he took apart a Lightning brand OTF. But the internal mechanisms are almost identical to that of an Ultratex. But I wanted to specifically take apart my Ultratex just to show you guys that maybe you already have one and have never taken it apart or maybe thinking about getting an Ultratex. And maybe you're a little bit um, nervous about taking them apart because you don't know what to expect. A little bit apprehensive. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys how to do it, um, how to do some maintenance on it. Because it's really not that difficult if you know what you're doing. And uh, that's why I wanted to make this video, just to show you guys how they work and um, how to take them apart and to put them back together. But definitely go check out Juju 1313's video because um, he's a really smart guy, much smarter than myself, has a lot more experience. So definitely go check him out. All right, so I have with me my uh, homemade Microtech tool. I cannot take credit for this, but all it is is a pencil sawed in half, wrapped in duct tape just to make it slightly more cool. And I just took uh, three of those small picture hanging tacks, or tacks you put in a picture frame, chopped the heads off with some um, wire cutters on needle nose pliers, and just pushed them into the pencil. So it works perfect because, like I said, my review, Microtech has their proprietary screws, and they also sell a bit to take their knives apart. But those bits are about $25 a piece. And I mean, really, if you can make one for practically nothing, you know, I can make the bit, you know, I, I'm willing to pay the money to buy the knife. I can't make the knife. I'm not willing to spend nearly $30 for a bit <laughs> just to take one knife apart. Now, one more thing I wanted to address is that some people are a little bit nervous about taking these things apart because they say it'll avoid the warranty. But really, if you take apart any knife, you void the warranty. Just about every single company, Spyderco, Benchmade, Kershaw, they'll all tell you to send your knife in for maintenance, you know, to have it re-oiled have screws tightened, um, resharpened, all that good stuff. But nobody does that. Maybe they send their knife in to have sharpened, but nobody sends their knife in to have it oiled. You know, stuff like that. Companies expect that. They know people take their knives apart all the time. I know all of us do. Um, companies just tell you that because they don't want you to take your knife apart and you have an accident or you don't know what you're doing and you lose a piece. Because that's, that's money the company has to take out of their pocket to have replaced. So, companies are perfectly willing to replace uh, factory defects, things that they mess up. They don't want to cover for your mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So, they don't want to have to pay because you lost something out of negligence. So, that's the only real reason they, they, they do that. But, really, they know people taking their knives apart. So, don't worry. Alright, so we're just going to start unscrewing it. I have a little magnetic bowl handy. Very, very nice screws. They are um, really thick, too, compared to most screws you see on knives holding the frame together. Now, this driver, if you can even call it that, uh, you can't really torque down on these screws, so you can't tighten them down too far or too hard, but um, I would recommend lock tightening these with some uh, blue Loctite or thread lock, whatever you want to call it. Just so these don't back out all the time on you. Because, um, like I mentioned in my review, these screws will back out occasionally just from the force of the blade being propelled. Like It's like assisted opening knives. Assisted opening knives will sometimes have the same thing because of the force. So you see this driver works perfectly. Now, when you're doing this, some things are under some spring tension, so kind of hold the two pieces together and just very gently remove this top frame. And uh, word of advice, hold on, just press down on the firing button, and just hold on to it. Very carefully take this aluminum scale off. And then remove the firing button, because the only thing holding the firing button in place is the two handles being pushed together. All right, so there's the firing button. There's a hole right in the middle and then a milled out hole on the side. Honestly, I'm not really sure why the hole on the side is there. You guys can see. I'm really not sure why that's there. There's the firing button. Put that off to the side. And um, very important, 
<laughs> I wanted to mention. Um, there is a tiny, tiny little spring underneath the firing button. Do not lose this. It's a very important piece. Um, so just put that off to the side, put it in a bag, put it on a magnetic dish or something. Because what that does is that it holds the firing button suspended. It suspends it and uh, kind of raises it up off of that surface just to kind of prevent drag from the button. You can see a lot of wear right there from the firing switch. Um, that's normal. Most of that's from that spring. But like I said, that just holds the button up so you don't have a lot of drag up against that aluminum handle or else it's going to make for a very sluggish deployment. Alright, so here is uh, the internal mechanism. Just be very careful because like I said, this is under spring tension and it's liable to pop off at you. So there is the carriage system, a single spring system. Now I believe the um, the Lightning brand OTF has a dual spring system, but I'm pretty sure that those two spring that one of those two springs are weaker than this one. So it's almost like those two make up one of these. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a very very high quality, high tension spring. But real quick, I wanted to show you the inside of this aluminum scale. It's a very nicely machined. You see that groove in there? That is for the spring. All those little dots of oil are from the factory. So that's nice. It comes oiled from the factory. There's the blade. Okay. So really, to, to clean this out, just very carefully do as I just did and just very carefully wipe that down and just blow on it. Spray some compressed air in here to just blow out any kind of lint that this would collect from being in your pocket because since, yeah, you know, it's not exempt from getting lint inside of it. Just because the sides aren't opened because it's not a folder, lint can still get up in the little hole that the blade comes out of. Um, you would also want to make do a few drops of oil or just one drop of oil on uh, the spring itself and just kind of wipe it down like you would the spring of a firearm. And uh, rule of thumb, I just like to lightly oil any part of the knife that has wear, that is going to receive wear. So any piece that's going to have another piece of the mechanism moving over it, you know, oil right there where the button goes, just a little bit. When I say oil, I mean a just a tiny drop and then maybe rub it in. Um, I, I recommend, a lot of people ask me what oil I use. I use Century Solutions Tough Glide. It comes in a little needle applicator. Some people use Benchmade's Blue Lube. Um, some people use Frog Lube. Just whatever. It doesn't really matter. But I want to show you guys just in case this does pop off or maybe you need to take it off for cleaning. Just uh, very carefully. This just comes off and then the spring is going to pop off because it is under tension the entire time it's on this carriage. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. Here is the carriage milled out of aluminum. You see the groove there for the spring. Now, very important to remember, this little notch right here, that is where the firing button attaches, and it always goes towards the tip of the knife right up here. I'm going to set that off to the side. There is the blade in there. The blade cannot come out of the handle, so there's really no way you can like take this apart, mix and match blades and handle scales. It just... You can't. Now that is the locking system. It is a, I believe it's steel, and it's got a spring underneath it, so it's under spring tension. That is um, the first lock. Then up here, that is the secondary lock. It's like a door. Like I said, it's under spring tension. So basically, what happens is I'm going to kind of, I'm going to try to show you guys. All right, then when this carriage is pushed down all the way. That little portion looks like the tang of a knife. I'm trying to do this all and get it in frame. <laughs> it loosens that little door right there. And that's very important. What that does is it disengages that lock so the blade can come forward. That's the first lock. Now what happens is that when the button, you move the button forward, it brings that lock back into engagement. And then that part right there opens up that lock. And uh, the spring tension that, that has been built up because the spring 
actually connects to the tang of the blade. So this little hook attaches to the tang of the blade, and then the smaller hook attaches right there on the end of the carriage. So one spring is always attached to the carriage, and the other spring is always attached to the tang of the blade. So keep that in mind. So when that loosens the gate, the blade is free to deploy. So under all that spring tension, the blade shoots out. And then when the blade's out, it gets locked into place by that door. Maybe it's poor terminology. I'm going to try to show you guys real quick. So I loosened up that door. The blade comes out. And then normally that door is pushed out of the way by the carriage system. Comes out and then locks like so. So like I said, the blade can't come out any farther than that just by design. Um, so like I said, it cannot move. Now it doesn't rattle like this when the spring is in it because the spring is actually pushing downward a little bit. Alright, so then what happens is, you know, it's been deployed. Then this, and I know it comes off of the spring, this comes forward and actually attaches to that little round piece as attached to the blade. See that little round piece pinned through the blade, of the tang of the blade? That is connected to that, pulling downward. So when you um, press back on the firing button, I'm getting pieces all stuck in here. Anyway, then when you push back on the firing button, you see that mechanism loosens that lock, and then the spring tension. Because don't forget that hook of the the hook of that spring is attached to the tang of the blade. So once that door is unlocked, that little locking mechanism right there, the blade shoots back down into the handle. And then, but anyway, it's it's probably like I said, poor terminology, but that's basically how that works. Bring that back in, and then it locks back into place. So Carter does a much better, a much better job explaining it than I just did. But that is, in a nutshell, how it works. I hope you guys understood that. Um, I'm going to show you how to put it back together. One very important thing: you cannot just take this carriage and lay it down into place. It has to be set in and then pushed back so that that door is pushed in, that lock is pushed in. That is very important or this knife will not work when you put it back together. So make sure you put it in a little bit past that door and then push it into place. Okay, like I said, here's the spring and just with these little hooks on the end of the spring, looks like a screen door spring. Now, one of these hooks is longer than the other. Make sure the longest hook goes down in the bottom towards the spike because that has to pin through the tang of the blade. So it has to go through this carriage system and pin into the tang of the blade like so. It's not going to be perfectly flush but it just has to go into the tang. Like I said or else it won't work. But anyway let's put this piece back in there. There's really no exact science to how you put this back together. Just whatever works. So, what I do is I make sure that I hold this down. Just press down on it with your thumb or whatever. Just to make sure it doesn't pop out. Oops. There we go. The carriage is actually sitting down on top of it instead of pushing that lock out of the way like I mentioned. And just try to bring this forward. Whoop, there we go and attach it. Make sure it just, it's just going to push up and then come back and just rest against that shoulder. See the hook is just going to push down in there, kind of rest against that. No exact science to that, it's just, it's got to be under that spring tension. So it's under spring tension right now, so be very careful or else it's just going to pop right back out. So just don't set it down real hard or anything like that. Alright, so we're going to put the firing button back in, take the little spring, goes down in this hole right in the center. Just set it down. And you see that little cutout right there goes in that 
stem of the carriage. Now this is also under spring tension, like I said, so just kind of try to hold that in place while you take the aluminum frame. Just put it back on. Now, my recommendation when putting this back together is to put two screws in that are the closest to the firing button first. Now, the reason I do that is because the only thing that holds the firing button in, as I said, is um, the two scales pushing together. So, this will just pop right out if you, or it could pop right out if you don't tighten those two first. That's just my recommendation anyway. All right, so we're just going to tighten all these back up. Like I said, you cannot really torque down on it, but these are all these are all tightened, so don't worry. They're not going to just fall out, and they're not going to unscrew for a long time. So I imagine most of you guys don't use your OTFs um, several, several, several times in a day. So you're not going to really have to worry about these screws backing out, especially if you lock tight them. But I mean, I, I'm just speaking to you guys who don't already have the proprietary Microtech driver for these screws. I'm just, I'm just talking to you if you make one of these yourself. But yeah, I would recommend Loctiting these screws with the blue Loctite. The blue allows you to be able to back the screws back out eventually. Not the red stuff or the white. That stuff's permanent pretty much. All right. So you see, that was very, very simple. It just takes a little bit of know-how and you have to be very delicate pretty much um, it is definitely a different process from taking apart most other knives but it's something that you guys are going to need to know how to do if you buy one of these unless you just buy it and store it and never plan on carrying it never plan on dust or lint building up never plan on oiling it but um it is crucial to oil those springs or else they will kind of um they could corrode over time and break now, yeah, you could just order a new one from, from Microtech, but if you don't have to, don't. So, that's just how you would perform simple maintenance on this. Um, you Now, I just do want to mention, you don't really have to take this apart. Some people say you can just drop oil down through the hole, but in my opinion, most of it's just going to get on the blade and not in the, um, the mechanisms needing oil. So, I would recommend taking this apart yourself and oiling um, the areas needed just to make sure that your Ultratech lasts for a really, really long time. Oh, but I do want to just show you real quick. Um, it is functioning. It is absolutely no issue whatsoever. So, actually, I think I made it a little bit more solid. So, functioning absolutely perfectly, just like it did before I took it apart. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope, I hope bleh, I can talk. I hope you um, can take something from this. And hope it helps out. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, stay sharp, and God bless. Sherman 614. Peace.